now we can put together the net effect of the sodium ions rushing into the cell um, in the broader context of the other ions that are operating within the cell. And this gives you the full picture of where the tug of war comes from. So this is the secret source of why is there a tug of war operating in the cell. And it all starts out with the sodium potassium pump. So the sodium potassium pump is something that is using energy uh, and it's sort of constantly working just like you imagine a little pump pushing sodium ions out of the cell. What that does is it creates an imbalance of positive and negative charges such that there are more positive charges outside the cell and fewer positive charges inside the cell and that difference in electrical charge is what gives rise to the membrane potential or VM. It all traces back to this kind of winding up of the spring basically you can, you can picture it as coming from this sodium potassium pump that's creating the potential literally the potential for the cell to do something interesting. If there wasn't that pump and the, the inside and outside uh, uh, potentials were the same, then the cell would always be in equilibrium and nothing interesting would ever happen. And so you have to have this imbalance to get the cell to do something in the first place. There are these channels called leak channels, which are always open. And this is kind of counterintuitive. That's where they're called leak because they're kind of leaky. They're, they're like a hole in a bucket. They're just always there. Um, and they're actually beneficial. We don't want to plug them up. Um, and uh, they uh, allow specifically potassium ions to flow in and out of the cell. So then why do we show in this diagram where the size of the circle reflects the number or concentration really of different ions inside versus outside the cell? Why are there so many more potassium ions inside the cell and not as many outside the cell. Well, one thing that's going on here is that the inside of the cell, as we said, is more negative than it is positive. It has a net negative potential. And these potassium ions have a positive charge. And if you remember your basic rules of electricity, opposites attract, right? So the positive charge on the potassium is attracted to the negative charge inside the cell, the negative potential inside the cell. Why doesn't that fully compensate for the uh, uh, amount of sodium ion difference in here? Why doesn't this balance out back at zero? The concentration difference exerts a force. And we mentioned this in the introductory lecture that there's this force of diffusion that's at work. Um, and so basically nature abhors an imbalance. Um, it abhors a vacuum, which is really the same thing as well. Um, that anytime you have more of something in one place and less of it somewhere else, the kind of random motion of, of particles in heat basically is that random motion. Uh, it's these little kind of ions are constantly bouncing all over the place. If you've been to the science museum, you've seen those exhibits. Um, and so those potassium ions aren't sitting still. They want to get out, okay, because they don't like to be all concentrated and shoveled, sho stuck together inside the cell. Um, that is uh, against this kind of diffusion force, this emergent force of diffusion. And so the amount of potassium that is inside is much less than it would be um, if there wasn't this diffusion force. And in, in particular, it's not enough to compensate totally for the amount of charge that's being pushed out through the sodium channels. And so that creates a situation where potassium basically is at equilibrium and in the equilibrium, the balance in, this, in the potassium channel at rest is such that the concentration force, which really wants to go pushing those extra concentrated potassium ions back out of the cell is exactly balanced by the attraction from the negative charge inside the cell. In that context, what would happen if you allowed sodium ions to come back into the cell, okay? This is what happens again, if we remember from the AMPA receptors,
they open up, they swing, they swing open, they twist open, and that allows these sodium ions to come in, whereas previously they were being actively kicked out of the cell. Now they have this opportunity through the excitatory synaptic input channel to come rushing back into the cell. And they are super excited to do so, so to speak. They want to come in for two reasons. In this case, the concentration difference, you have much more sodium outside than inside, and the electrical difference are both aligned in the same direction. And so that makes the sodium extra excited to come in. So that's why uh, sodium is excitatory. Uh, it, it brings positive ions into the cell. Um, and you can also see that you have to be careful about that um, if you just allow those sodium ions to come in constantly, then you'll lose that negative uh, overall potential of the cell, the negative balance of the cell, um, and it will cease operating as it should. And finally, we can think about the role of the last major ion, which is chloride. If you look at these two guys, you can recognize common table salt, sodium chloride. Uh, again, the neuron actually evolved as did all of our cells in the seawater, um, and we were originally aquatic animals uh, in early evolution, and that uh, we basically carry around that ancient ocean with us in our brains. Um, and so salt water basically plays a really critical role in the functioning of our neurons. Um, we're 70% water, and that's, that's uh, important for how we think. The chloride ions uh, have a negative charge, okay? And because they have a negative charge, they're getting pushed out by the negative charge inside the cell. So uh, the electrical potential causes a corresponding concentration imbalance, driving those negative charges out of the cell. So um, even if you were to open up these inhibitory channels, nothing would happen, okay? It's only once you have some excitatory input coming into the cell, that that then creates the opportunity for this inhibition to oppose that uh, rush of positive ions in because these greater imbalance of concentration of chloride ions, if the inside of the cell gets more positively charged, then these guys really start to come back in. They're like, hey, we don't want to be pushed out here in the first place. The only reason we're staying out here is because of the electrical imbalance. Once you start to reduce that electrical imbalance, then these guys, according to the diffusion force, will come rushing back in. And so, again, all of these forces between diffusion and electrical create the dynamics that we talked about in the equations. Uh, the uh, effect of inhibition only takes effect as the membrane potential starts to move away from that resting value, as it starts to pull away, again, from that uh, tug of war picture that we were talking about, we go back to our picture here, uh, only when the membrane potential starts to move away from that reversal or resting potential, then inhibition starts to have an effect. This is again known as shunting inhibition, um, and we can see exactly where it comes from by understanding in detail how the ions all work together in the cell. Okay, so hopefully you can see where this equation comes from. It's all just about uh, how the net balance, the E is determined exactly by the net balance of electrical and concentration forces operating um, on each individual ion separately. So each individual ion in our overall equation has its own particular uh, reversal uh, or driving potential E. Um, and uh, each one experiences its own particular force, net force, of the difference between when that membrane potential starts to move away from that uh, equilibrium or driving potential, that's when you start to get the flow of ions through those channels. Um, so hopefully when you put those two pictures together, you can see that that's where these equations come from. Uh, and it's uh, really kind of a magical, special, uh, but also very simple uh, in the grand scheme of things uh, dynamic that creates the potential for us to think. So again, wrapping up uh, in this kind of mind-blowing way, these very, very simple basic electrical physical principles going all the way down to fundamental physics of electricity, magnetism, and this emergent force of diffusion give rise to these equations
which we can put in our computer and capture the essence of how individual neurons function. Uh, and we think by capturing those basic dynamics of individual neurons and then having those neurons interacting together, that we can capture the emergent phenomena that result from these interactions of neurons in larger scale models when we put together the networks of neurons interacting. And so our next chapter will start looking at, at those dynamics of how neurons interact in networks, building on these core foundations of how the individual neuron behaves.